And, and there's two pots of cash that nobody's figured out yet, okay? And it's controlled by women. I was in Saudi Arabia in Riyadh teaching entrepreneurship, you know, in the King Saud University. And I was talking to all these young, all guys, because it was, a, well, as you know, men's university and women's universities, right? And you're building equal number of both. That was kind of interesting. So one of the comments, the guy goes, oh, yeah, you know, my... Our families are big, and you know the woman control everything at home. And I was going, yeah, it sounds familiar. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it. Can you believe this? He said, yeah, one fourth of all assets in the Saudi economy is owned by women, controlled. I said, that's a lot of money. He goes, yes, they can get whatever they want. And then when I was there, they said there are all these women's you know business associations setting up and small business because governments try to privatize, right? And then. I met some people and he said, oh, by the way, Sharon, he goes, do you think there's any Silicon Valley woman who want to partner with this Saudi woman? And I said, uh, yeah, it's because the market's big and booming because they have like eight, seven or eight kids each, right? And they have a lot of money, right? So that's one market, for example, that nobody ever looks at totally. And it's two split markets, but it's, you know, big. The other one in which I, it kind of fell off a chair, I was looking at The Economist and it said um, five years ago, the Japanese woman controlled well, the Japanese savers is controlled by women. Had $16 trillion in assets. It's $16 trillion. The Chinese sovereign fund only is $2.7 trillion. And then, by the way, the yen went up 20%, so it's now worth like $21, $22 trillion, trillion dollars. And it's controlled by the woman. The men ran the government and went bankrupt. <laughs> the woman said, we kept it and we saved it. So nobody's ever tapped that. Right? But they control it. So all I'm saying is that as you move toward consumer markets, you watch for who makes the decisions because that will tell you what kind of products you should probably develop and who you should be talking to because I'm a market researcher. Always talk to the buyer, i.e. the decision maker. My, my daughter said it best. She used to say, yeah, dad's the leader of the house. Mom is, makes the final decisions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she power the purse. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of one thing I've observed you know, over the last couple of years. Is that, and if you look at each country, you'll see the same thing happening as we move more from an, an, just only industrial to more of a uh, middle-class consumer. China is exploding right now. Just exploding. Talk to any Chinese and they'll say half the time, the wife controls it all. Same thing. Right? So I think there's a lot of areas where we need to kind of re... re uh, kind of, Reevaluate the way we see the world, because the, the balance of power and money is shifting pretty quickly, and 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 that's the future of Silicon Valley because we're global, right? we're not just focusing here.